So hello and welcome to today's webinar, Sports Facilities Management, um, offered by Oregon State's Professional and Continuing Education Unit. I'm Paula Matano, the Program Manager here at the Professional and Continuing Ed, for short, unit. Um, we are also joined by Jeff Jeremia, Director of Facilities with ESPN, so we're going to hear from him um, shortly. <clears throat> So before we dive in, I just want to get a few housekeeping items out of the way. Um, this session is being recorded, and you guys will receive a link to the recording within 24 hours of the, of the webinar wrapping up. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the webinar. So you have a chat feature that you can shoot questions to me. Um, if you want to ask a question directly, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you, and you're welcome to do it that way. So you're definitely welcome to ask the questions throughout the webinar. Uh, if you'd like, we'll also have time at the end of the webinar for any questions that come up then as well. All right, so again, welcome. And just as a quick intro, Oregon State's Professional and Continuing Education Unit um, is a non-credit arm of the university, and we engage the community through educational opportunities for both personal enrichment and professional development. So we do offer hundreds of courses and certificate programs that are open to the public and they offer tangible value through quality programming that address educational, professional, and economic development goals for you or your organization. We also offer corporate training for any individuals that are interested in that. So quickly today, I would like to go over our agenda. I'm going to be introducing Jeff um, and then handing the reins over to him as he presents on his career background and experience working in the field. And then also he's gonna walk us through uh, the layout for his upcoming PACE course. Um, we're also going to cover some of our program benefits. We'll have time for questions, uh, as I mentioned before, and we'll wrap up the webinar by giving you our contact information in case you guys have any other questions that arise. So welcome, Jeff. We're so excited to have you join us for this webinar. Um, Jeff has enjoyed a long and productive career at ESPN, working in a variety of fields, and now serves as the Director of Facilities for ESPN in Los Angeles. He received his degree in film and television production from Loyola, Loyola Marymount University and has worked both domestically and internationally everywhere from Mexico and to Spain, Germany, and France. So uh, Jeff, thanks so much. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let you get started. Hi everybody, I really appreciate you uh, joining the webinar today. Um, I am excited to be here uh, on the phone and excited to um, be working on this new um, sports management certificate, uh, specifically in the areas of sports facilities and event management, which is really um, where my background uh, comes into play. Um, I do work for ESPN in Los Angeles um, since I graduated from Loyola Marymount. It's actually been the only company I've ever worked for. Um, for the purposes of this, this course and the webinar today, uh, we won't be going into any of ESPN's business per se. Uh, I'll talk about my background, uh, but in terms of ESPN current business and past business, we'll kind of shy away from that a little bit <clears throat> and, and go into more uh, event and facilities management in general. Um, as on, you might be able to see on the screen there, I think one of the most important um, things about sports facilities management or event management is that you have to be passionate about um, the field of sports. Uh, so with that said, I'm a Northern California uh, person. I live in Southern California, so it's actually a bit difficult uh, to survive down here with, um, with, with, with what's on, but I'm a Giants, 49ers, and Kings fan, and uh, watch them and attend games when at all possible. <clears throat> and Paula, there it is. Um, the next, the next slide is uh, really kind of going into my, my experience. Um, as Paula mentioned, um, I have worked both domestically and internationally. Uh, for the first 12 years of my career, um, I was part of the team that uh, planned and executed all of the X Games events, um, both winter and summer versions of those. Um, and for those not familiar with the X Games, um, they're live, multi-day, multi-venue, uh, multi-sport, uh, live television productions of um, action sports, skateboarding, uh, snowboarding, BMX, uh, motocross, you name it, rally car. 
<clears throat> and really for the first 12 years of my career, uh, it was really spent uh, being an event manager um, of, a, of a sport that would travel around to different cities, um, not like a, a circus or anything, but um, more of a, a circuit of events, um, ranging anywhere from locally in Los Angeles or Aspen, Colorado, and then uh, internationally, Mexico City, um, France, Germany, Spain, Canada, places like that. Um, for the, so for the first 12 years of my career, um, I really spent those uh, those years in areas like event operations, business operations, um, areas that are concerning to guest services and staff services, and was really on the side of things that, um, though we never had a, a permanent facility, we always had to build our, our own courses and our own entrances and ticket plans and things like that, um, we would go to permanent facilities and um, come in and be, you know, their event for the, the week or the month or however long it took to build. So my experience on that side of things has, um, you know, led me to working with lots of facility managers, lots of uh, local city uh, entities, uh, host cities, much like the Olympics, uh, when they um, when they host the uh, Winter and Summer Olympics. Um, and then the last four years of my career, uh, actually um, turned in my passport, basically, and uh, uh, kind of shifted careers a little bit <clears throat> to where I, I'm now not in charge of events that go into buildings and execute and move out, but actually manage a facility uh, for ESPN, kind of day-to-day operations, more mechanical services, um, and then operations in the building. So, so really my experience is kind of a you know both sides of the coin having experience working with facility managers and um, cities but then also being the facility manager and um, hosting things in our facility as well um, a little bit of a roadmap of myself <clears throat> i think that you know in, in all of our lives we when we find our passion you can kind of trace it back to you know, unique moments in your life that you kind of knew what you wanted to do, but you didn't know how to get into it. Um, if you're all sports fans on the on the uh, on the call now, you may remember the first time you walked through a you know uh, a vom and into your first baseball game and saw all the green grass, or the first time you walked into you know an NBA arena and just was amazed by how close you were to things. Um, or a soccer event, which is, you know, hundreds of thousands of people uh, in one place. And my, my, my passion really started uh, in Sacramento. Uh, we had one arena, uh, Arco Arena, where the Kings played. It was kind of the place to be in Sacramento. It's kind of a small town. And I always remember, you know, that being an amazing experience, uh, going with my family um, to see what was ever, whatever was there. And then um, the old Candlestick Park uh, that the Giants used to play in, that was my first baseball game. I just remember never, ever seeing that much grass. Um, but I was a kid then, and I didn't totally understand that that would be my passion later on in life, but I knew that those are experiences that stuck with me. Um, growing up a sports fan, it, it, it's, you know, it's hard to you know, take away the, uh, the facility that the, the, that the team plays in. Um, and just and just look at the team, um, you know, team, you know, organizations like the Boston Celtics, you know, the Boston Garden was just as important as the the team itself. Um, and you know, much like you know the Boston Red Sox, Fenway Park is like an iconic place to play. People travel there uh, all year round to look at the facility, even though the team's not playing. <clears throat> and so, after high school and before college, um, I took two summers uh, with buddies, family. It's kind of a mix of mixed bag of people. Um, we actually toured the East Coast and Midwest and um, for a couple weeks at a time and visited uh, baseball stadiums, football stadiums. We actually got to hit all three uh, professional Hall of Fames, which is pretty cool. Um, minor league, major league, whatever we could catch on the way. Uh, the most intense summer was 17 games in 16 days. We saw a uh, game a day game at Wrigley Field in Chicago and then saw a night game at uh old Comiskey or New Comiskey um down the way in Chicago and um it was amazing summer. Um what I took from it was that for some reason in my head I always 
appreciated the experience that I had and wondered how like game day came together. Um, wondered who, you know, was everyone full time there or did they volunteer or were they part time jobs? You know, how why was the experience so so good um with such a mixed bag of people? Um so two summers after that, um, you know, I find myself in, in college, uh majoring in film and television, which I also had an interest in. I think just entertainment in general is a is a cool business to be in. Um but I was working on uh, you know, not for professional sports teams, but staging events for ESPN. So uh, I'm not sure how old everyone is on the phone, but um, there was a my first event actually executing an event was um, the Great Outdoor Games in Reno, Nevada, which is essentially like all the um, dog sports and people running across logs and climbing up trees and fishing. And just to see the passion of, of the crowd that would show up on just trying to understand, you know, where are these people and why are they so passionate about this? And then later on in the summer, um, trying to execute the ESPY Awards, which is the exact opposite of that, with red carpets and tuxedos and dresses. Um, but I was instantly hooked. I, I really, um, the thing that I really grasped onto um, as I was graduating college and starting work was that film and television um, in and of itself is fun uh film film is tough because you work for a year on it no one sees it then people see it and then they tell you a year later that they think it was good or bad whereas a live event or a live tv show um or a live sporting event you get instant feedback from the crowd whether or not they're having fun whether or not they were bored um are they responding to things on the big screen th things like that um, if people are walking around confused, you know, you need to switch up your guest services mentality. Um, and so I really got a rush out of being able to execute live things. And if, if, if something was wrong, we would change it the next day to accommodate it. Um, whereas the film part of thing was you keep doing what you're doing and you're just not really getting validated at all. Um, and then, uh, as I had mentioned, the next 12 years was kind of a, um, a bit of a blur. Uh, traveling, executing events, meeting people in the world. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work in multiple, you know, Olympic stadiums that have been built for the Olympics um, and in cities that have hosted the Olympics before. Um, so getting to draw on that experience and the many managers that were there uh, as we move in and try to, we tried to um, explain what the X Games were. Um, it was, it was a fun experience. Um, no doubt it was perfect for the time period. Um, You'll see along the way on the timeline, I visited multiple countries. Uh, um, I think one of the biggest impact points um, was in 2011. Uh, I attended what's called the Disney Institute uh, in Anaheim, California, which is uh, based on the Disney principles of customer service, uh, employee management, and guest relations. Um, and that was a kind of a life-changing three-day experience. Just kind of opened up a lot of ideas and doors for us uh, and really got us set for what we were about to do at the X Games, and that was to expand from two events a year, or three events a year, to six events a year. Um, so I had the opportunity to be a part of the um, expansion um, of our event and in the bid committee where we could actually analyze city books and go visit them to see if it was a viable option to do the event. Um, and then in 2013, uh, spent a lot of time on the road in a bunch of different places, states and countries. As you'll see there, and then uh, since then, since 2014, uh, put the brakes on the travels and really have been focusing on one, one, one building and how we service that from a day-to-day -day standpoint. Productions come in, productions come out, um, how we adapt and change. Um, so the total opposite side of the coin. Um, I will, you know, um, the next the next couple slides are are more about showing you a few pictures and talking about them. Um, I think something that is valuable um, nowadays is to, to, to really, you know, unpack the idea that a facility or a venue does not necessarily have to be already built or constructed. Um, that's kind of what we had proved at the X Games was that, um, you know, we would come into a city, look at a mountain, 
try to understand if this event would be able to accommodate guests, fit all of our courses, uh, be able to make money, things like that. Um, and so we, you know, my experience, uh, you know, not not solely, we were on a, a very uh, broad and, and wide ranging team with a lot of people, but having experience with um, winter event management um, is something that I hope to bring to the course that I'm going to teach um, and the idea that building temporary venues and servicing them is just as um, is just as challenging as managing a building that's already built and accommodating different things that come into the facility. Um, winter poses, you know, extra um, challenges in terms of risk management and safety um, and also requires a lot more, a lot more planning um, in terms of timeline to build things. Um, on the converse of that, summer events, um, you'll see a couple photos here where, you know, I was part of uh, the event operations team uh, that would work on how we would fit our sports into places that, you know, host other things. So the picture on the top right is actually the Staples Center um, that, you know, uh, hosts the Lakers and the Clippers and the Sparks and the LA Kings. Um, but for a month in the summer, for many years, it also hosted the X Games. So how do we get, how do we work with an existing facility to incorporate sports that we want to showcase? Um, below that are, you know, some photos of some skate parks and the big air ramp that we would build on top of a, a parking structure or in a street. Um, so just the idea that, you know, events and festivals and all things surrounding sports, um, they don't necessarily fit perfectly in you know stadiums or currently built venues so you have to get creative when when thinking about that um additionally you know my experience internationally um is probably probably the most valuable you know lessons that i've learned um while in my career um you know being able to communicate um is probably the number one lesson in, in really any field, any career, any any area, but in event management, um, it's it's super important, especially when you're either don't speak the same language as somebody or have different uh, ways of doing things. So around the clock, there, the top left is day one building a venue in um, Foz do Iguaçu, Brazil. Uh, below that is um, some venue build in uh, Munich, Germany. Um, to the right, that's Barcelona with the, the vert ramp. And then just a photo in the center was that, you know, when you go and execute an event or move into a facility, you don't have to just create the, the infrastructure that the fans see, but you have to create the infrastructure that you have to work in while there. Um, so that's an example of some temporary offices that we, that we built. Um, and just again, this is all, this is not all me. This is a, what a team generated, um, what a team did together um, along with the local folks, the host city people, the local um, authorities, police and fire and safety. Um, so just one big coordination wasn't, wasn't all me. Um, and then now really um, my focus is facility management. So where we used to move into the Staples Center and bunch of, you know, uh, drop a bunch of dirt on the ground. Um, I'm sure that sent, you know, the Staples, people, the Staples Center people, you know, into a tizzy and there was a lot of things that had to be worked out in terms of cleaning and how we were going to leave the venue and left. Um, but essentially now the wheel there that I show you, uh, which is courtesy of a, a different website, but it's all too applicable these days. Um, it's really those are the, those are the main points of uh, facility management when you are the one managing the facility 365 and say, you have a basketball team and a hockey team, you host concerts, um, you do big events, things like that. These are all the things that you need to do to maintain your facility and be welcoming enough for, you know, to program your facility year round. Um, so planning, budgets, uh, technology, um, operations and maintenance, making sure the place looks nice, um, things like that. Um, just just some examples of you know planning an event whether it be outside or inside these are three versions of the same map and and then an actual photo of, of what the event looked like from an aerial shot that's staples center um the one on the left is the nitty-gritty map that everyone used for loading in and the build and then you recreate the 
the map in the middle for guests so they don't need that much detail and then in the end you hope it you hope it shows up um, in real life um, guest services is probably at the heart of, of what I of, of what my experience is um, I think some of the best guest services that I've ever had um, put upon myself was uh, on a cruise one time where every day you know before you went to bed you'd get like an itinerary for the next day and you could call and someone would help you um, Disneyland is also a great a great place as well um, but it, we you know at the X Games were um, were challenged with um, you know providing great guest services for all key stakeholders whether that be VIPs um, uh, the athletes, the attendees, the media, and then, you know, the people that work there. Um, so at the heart of it, information is is key. The services that you offer to people is key. And um, everything that goes around it, from the experience that you go looking for a ticket online, to your purchase, to your arrival, your parking, um, how the event goes, did you have fun, uh, being able to comment afterwards and, and really wanting you to get to want to come back. Um, it is you know all encompassing guest services, um, and then just to, just to wrap it up, you know a few lessons from my experience, which are not I think totally unique to sports management or facilities management, but um, you know communication is 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 key. You can never communicate enough. Um, email, phone call, text, whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, ensuring that. You're over communicating to make sure that every stakeholder um, is taken care of um, on a year-round basis whether you're on the facility side or the event side um, maintaining relationships consistently all year round is huge because oftentimes in the sports world or the event world you'll make a contact um, at, a, at a facility or you know with a, a vendor um, but then you'll travel away for a while or they will leave and then you'll pop back in once a year, twice a year, um, but maintaining a relationship consistently can help with uh, with all that. Um, I, I think that you know you're probably all here for a reason and wondering if the sports, you know, if sports management is for you. Uh, the third bullet point there kind of speaks to hiring good people that are there for the right reasons. Uh, I think there's a there's a huge misconception in sports that that everything is is super glamorous um, and what you see as a product in front of you as you sit in the seat or the on TV, it does look amazing. Um, but the hard work and the tireless effort that the people behind the scenes put into um, put into sports management um, is often, you know, um, it goes unrecognized. And so you have to want to get into them for the right reasons. You know, if it's, if it's that you want to be courtside when, you know, someone makes an amazing dunk or, or that last second um, touchdown that the Vikings just had the other day. Um, you know, most, most sports management people are not, are not courtside or on, on the sidelines. They're, they're up in their office trying to ensure that um, people are taken care of and, you know, think they're ready for the game to be over and switching it for the next day. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, um, you have to get into it for the right reasons. Um, and that's, that's gotta be inside of you. So, um, on the flip side in facility management and, and event management, there's a core, usually a core group of team of people that work, you know, 365 days on something, whether they, they work for a team or the facility and, um, that's their one focus, but on game day, um, that that staff explodes to hundreds and sometimes thousands of people that are temporary hires or their security or, or temporary you know uh, hospitality vendors food people um, and you have to be able to communicate what the overall vision of the event is and what the facility stands for to somebody that might be there for a day um, and it is not a reoccurring staff member so trying to recruit and hire people that you can get consistency with for that reasons um, is a huge thing. Um, and then uh, finding your why, I think that's that's huge. Getting into an industry just to get into it is not um, not advised, I don't believe. Um, though I don't know all of you, you might be in an industry now um, that you were passionate about, maybe you're not passionate about it, but um, knowing that getting into sports and facility management um, takes a lot of your time and a lot of a lot of effort um you know you gotta you have to be in in into it and you have to find your why 
Um, not what you want to do, but why you want to be there. Um, and then lastly, it's a photo of me. It's actually not trash I'm carrying, but um, delivering <laughs> food to people up on a mountain um, in the middle of winter because they didn't have the opportunity to come down and, and eat. Um, you know, sometimes in sports management, event management, especially um, doing the dirty work is part of the job um, and just something to something to think about uh, moving forward. Um, so that that's kind of me, uh, my experience in a nutshell. And um, and so what I'm hoping to do, essentially, um, I don't know if I clicked past it. Oh, there we are. Is to take all of my experience because I do feel as though in my career I want to have, you know, be a mentor and be a leader in the industry. Um, not necessarily about what I do currently, but in general. Um, and that's the reason why why I want to teach this class. Uh, I want to take my 15, 16 years of experience and you know groom others to be part of the industry, clear out misconceptions of the industry. Um, and really connect people. I mean, I'm I'm into it because I believe in live events and live sports. Um, that's my belief. So you'll see um, the the it's a five week course. I think um, Paula may go into more of the nitty gritty, but essentially, this is where I'm designing the course to take us. Um, we are going to look at you know an overall look at things. Um, you know, designing a new facility, you see old facilities going away and new facilities coming up um, every day, um, planning an event management organization, what does that look like, um, the overall guest experience, and then and then really if you're a, either an event that comes in and out of cities all the time or you're a facility that hosts reoccurring things, you know, how do we, how do we analyze how an event did or ticket sales happen and what's the legacy of an event or a sports uh, facility at the end of the day. Um, some of the outcomes, I'm not going to read them verbatim, but essentially um, I want to give you guys like a, a, an honest look at what it takes to be in this industry, how to, um, well, how to get into it, but then also, you know, areas of opportunity that, that everyone has in terms of implementing processes and, and bringing your skills that you might already have into this industry as well. Um, I am looking to, you know, it is an online course. Much of it is, you know, click through content, but um, I am in the midst of recording some audio interviews with current you know, industry professionals, people I've met along the way. Um, so if you're, if you guys listen to podcasts, uh, it'll be much like that. Just me sitting down with somebody that's either, you know, already working for a team and they run an event business or they work at a facility, just trying to, you know, pick their brain about different subjects. Um, and then there will be a, a textbook that we read through as well, because there are, there are some really good insights in this, uh, this book that I is on the screen right now. Awesome. Thanks. Um, I think that brings it. That brings us to Paula. Um, I'm I'm open to answering questions here if we have time. Uh, I know Paula wants to probably get get through a few more slides as well. So thank you all, and um, and I look forward to um, either talking with you in the future um, and getting to know you if you uh, sign up for the class. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, we do have uh, one a couple of questions that have come in. So um, you you've talked a little bit about getting into the field and I know that you had um, how you got started. Do you have any advice for somebody who's just starting out? Like how do you get your foot in the door for this kind of a career field? Sure. So I think that um, depending on what you're willing to do, what your, what your financial situation is, um, trying to just, and you know, you're probably all from different areas of the country, um, but looking at, you know, either your city's, you know, um, uh, planning website to show what events are coming to um, your city or, you know, if you are, are passionate about a certain team, um, really trying to get involved. You can start as, you know, um, I, I don't know anyone in the sports industry that would not take a, a meeting with somebody either. <laughs> um, when, someone shows, when someone shows interest in what we do, it's like, oh, aha. Finally, you know, somebody that somebody that wants to be there um, that is there for the right reason. So either contacting someone that works in your in your area uh, at a venue. Um, I think the biggest 
opportunity that's out there is to look at things that come in and out of your city, um, whether that be a volleyball tour or an event like the X Games or whatever it is, uh, even if it's a music tour, um, getting involved with a specific event that you can temporarily break away from your full-time job or if you're in class, get in, meet people and ask, you know, Hey, where are you going next? Are you, are you working this event again? Or maybe they work for a company that services events all over the, the country. Um, that's probably the biggest opportunity. Um, aside from that, we all know, you know, applying to jobs on, on websites is kind of a black hole of, um, of things. So, you know, if, if you're in a, if you're in a city, uh, um, call up your local arena and, you know, see what opportunities are there. If not, look at what they're hosting, um, concerts, uh, sporting events, different things that they wouldn't necessarily be responsible for, but they're hosting it and then go to that organizing body to, to try to get in as a temporary hire um, or, or full-time. Uh, I think that's, that's the biggest opportunity at this point, depending on your situation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. So, um, Thank you all so much. I hope you guys got a lot of information out of that. I really liked hearing that you were um, envisioning for the layout, Jeff. Um, and so we really hope that you will consider joining us uh, for our course. So our upcoming PACE course with Jeff is Sports Facilities and Event Management, and it starts on March 19th. Um, and it is 100% online. And so what that means is that you will have the flexibility um, to log in Whenever you can and go over the readings and assignments and you'll be guided through the materials by Jeff um, for the duration of the five weeks. Um, we encourage you to sign up with PACE um, and why choose PACE is because you will see an immediate return um, on your investment because our courses are designed to meet the demands of today's changing job market. We do course our instructors that have um, a lot of um, a lot of experience in in the field and have are being able to bring that expertise to our courses. Um, you'll also be able to diversify and extend your resume. Um, and we do use state of the art technology to um, offer you these online courses. So we try to replicate all of the um, in person class experiences in our online environment. Um, and actually, Jeff, we've got one more question from David, who is wondering if in take where do you think this could take any of us in the industry after completion? Uh, so, Paula, sorry, you kind of cut out in the middle of that one. I, I think it was that where after completion of this course, where, where does that put somebody? Yeah. Is that, is that where? Okay. Um, I think that in general, I mean, again, it depends on <clears throat> where you are in your career, your experience and background. Um, I, I think that anyone that if you go to apply for a job after this course and you can put on your resume that you, you took the time to try to understand the industry um, can only give you a, a leg up um, in trying to get a job. I think what's also concurrent in that is that, and similar to the first question, is that while you're taking the course um, or in between now and whenever, trying to go um, volunteer at, a, at an event, a sporting event, or get involved with them somewhere um, is huge too, because people want people want experience um, as well, not just not just um you know certificates and degrees um so I, I i won't i won't say that this course is going to automatically get you a job i think that ultimately you're going to find that you you will want to get into it i, I think i'm going to take a very positive and proactive approach and i think that there's so much that has to do with facility and event management that is really just daily daily life stuff um that you're going to it'll just give you more confidence to go out there and, and and go try to, to try to get it. Um, this is not uh, an industry that is, you know, um, too difficult to solve. I mean, we all do events in our lives. We all have been to somewhere and had a good experience. You all have somewhere that's had a, you know, you've had a bad experience and you bringing your passion along with the certificate to a job interview um, is a huge thing. I think Ultimately, too, through the podcast that um, I am going to do, you'll have some names, some contact informational, information of some industry professionals. You'll have me as a contact and a mentor. So whether or not you want to get into one facet or the other, 
um, I can give you contacts with how to. So, so ultimately, the certificate is is going to look great on any resume or any application, um, but just getting to know somebody, having a mentor in the industry, whether or not you want to be um, an accountant or you know a facility manager, it's 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 kind of who you know as well. So, really having access and um, some information behind it. I, I think that any interview that you can go to. Um, with some contacts and references and some, some wherewithal about the industry. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, um, for – oh, David said thanks. You sound awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for attending today. Um, I do want to – I did want to leave you guys um, for – information that the course starts on March 19th. You guys are welcome to register via our website. Um, and please feel free to contact me with any questions. My email is down there. I'm Paula. Um, to take on people's questions as well. So we're, all, we're always happy to have you guys. Um, feel free to reach out. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.